and talk a little bit about the money and and how hard of a struggle it was to kind of live this lifestyle you know we hear a lot today about the great resignation it looks like you guys were before the curve hello everybody welcome back to the cabin have a great episode today special episode We've got some folks standing right here to my left matter of fact you can probably see back here we've got american arbitrage and lady arbitrage they've come to join us today talk a little bit about reselling a little bit about social media and a few other things as well i think you'll enjoy it all right y'all some of you may be following carrie you may be following dawn lady arbitrage it's american arbitrage they are tiktok famous instagram <laughs> famous this is like the godfather of shorts here <laughs> and the god sure. the godmother sure. i don't know i'm sure <laughs> she's, she's pretty big on it she is <laughs> let me tell you that is great stuff and i've known carrie now for i don't know over a year yeah, for over sure over a year i think yeah and unfortunately but you know, you know yeah we, it's, we, it's, we been it's been a mess it's been a mess and so now that y'all have dominated the short scene you've dominated it now <laughs> on i guess everywhere instagram and Pinterest, on, Pinterest, 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 a big deal. Facebook <laughs> and TikTok, of course, and even now on YouTube, you're you're really really growing here on YouTube yeah, it's as well. Yeah, grown a lot in the last couple months. For and sure. so we're gonna talk a little bit about your model. We'll talk a little bit about social media, but I want to talk about reselling first and how you got to this point. I think people will be really really interested in that. All right, normally we do ladies first, but Carrie gets very jealous, so we're gonna start with <laughs> Carrie. We're gonna start with Carrie. So Carrie. <laughs> All right, when did you start reselling and two-part question? I don't know if you can keep up. Two-part question. He's got like four degrees, y'all. Seven <laughs> degrees, something like that. So he can keep up. When did you start reselling and then when did you decide this is what you wanted to do full-time? That's a great question, honestly, because it wasn't the same time. I graduated from college, University of Utah, go Utes. See, there you go. He's going to tell you how many degrees Yeah, you I have three degrees, political <laughs> science, Spanish, and history. And I was going to go back and be a teacher. I wanted to be a professor. I wanted to teach history uh, like Kevin, but do go. better, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but um, what happened was the recession was happening. I was working in and out and apparently I wasn't in and out material. Nope. Um, it didn't work out. 2008. Yeah, no, it was like 2011 when I okay. was doing this. So, was going, okay, got so I, I stopped working there. I got fired. And then <laughs> I decided, um, what do I want to do? Do I want to go back to school right away? Or what do I want to mm -hmm. do for a job? And my mom brought me down a Pokemon video game sealed. Back mm -hmm. in 2011, it wasn't as big of a deal as it is mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. So it was, you know, I started at a... close. No, I think it probably is worth eight, nine hundred dollars now. Uh -huh. I started at a dollar on eBay because I had sold some sports cards mm -hmm. in the past. And it just went up and up and up to 70 bucks, which I thought was huge. Uh -huh. $70. Yeah, think of and how many hours you'd have to work at the fast food job. Exactly. That was exactly. like, yeah, that was like a whole day's work at in and out So <laughs> it was pretty awesome. I got super involved with that, watching American Pickers, mm -hmm. Storage Wars, Pawn Stars. Mm -hmm. And we just started, and it, and it kind of snowballed. I determined, you know, I really like this. I put off going back to school for like two years until I realized, you know what, I'm going to get a store and I'm just going to go for it. I started a live auction. That's where I met Don. Right, yep. right, I was right. an auctioneer and did live auctions. So, yeah, yeah, that's where I started. It reminds me of a country song about auctions. <laughs> I've never heard that song. You guys probably don't listen to yeah, music. Yeah, not I much. To no. <laughs> All right, Don, when did you start reselling? Um, I'd probably say about, about 10 to 12 years ago, too, somewhere okay. in there. My dad uh, retired and started buying storage units because oh. he started watching Storage Wars uh -huh. and all that. Yeah. So I would go and help him clean those out. He got a booth at the swap meet okay. and I started helping him sell at the swap meet. We met people in the community, um, an antique store, and they told us about auctions. Mm -hmm. I went to one auction. And he happened to be there <laughs> and it went down handing out from flyers. There. I was handing out flyers <laughs> illegally at another person's <laughs> auction, which yeah. I got in big trouble with that guy for doing it. I handed her a... a you were handing out auction... Or for my yeah, auction at his yeah. auction. Yes. That is awesome. Yeah, he that got really so good. mad at me. It's but, like uh, appearing in somebody's shed <laughs> trying to get more flyers. I know, right? It's, it's clout crazy. chasing 101, and I did well because I won. <laughs> I won. <laughs> Don started coming to the auction, yep. and, and you know, she got she got the first prize. What can I say? Yeah, right. Were you working at the time? So we know he left the illustrious fast food industry, right? Yes. So it wasn't a very hard choice for him to do this reselling. But what were you doing before you started doing that? I was a plumber, pipe fitter for the union. Okay. So, wow. I was so you were making some money. Yeah, I was making some really good money. Yeah. and I, But it was a lot of hours and it's hard mm -hmm. work on your body. No doubt about so it. So no this was, seemed a lot easier. Okay. Very in some cool. ways. In All some right. Ways, yeah. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about the money and, and how hard of a struggle it was to kind of live this lifestyle you know we hear a lot today about the great resignation it looks like you guys were 
before the curve. You guys did the great resignation, Carrie from In and Out, and <laughs> Don from a career that actually made money. And so that's fair, that's I'm, fair. I'm just, I, that's what I want to explore because there's a lot of people out there that right now they, they want that side, di side gig to be the real gig. And I want to tell the truth about it and kind of look at what you guys have done since you made that decision to go down this road. All right, you guys, we've got, whenever we do these videos in here, we come in and we bring folks in here who are full-time resellers and we talk about the reality of it because I hate to leave people with the wrong impression that, you know, you're going to live on a yacht and make tons <laughs> of money doing this stuff. It just simply isn't the case. It's really, to me, I, I don't mind encouraging people with, you know, somebody who has a, a steady income, a big income, um, to kind of, you know, let the other person kind of go their own way and to make some extra money as opposed to getting a second job. It just gives you so much more freedom. But I hate to tell people to do full time if they really have high expectations of making yeah. hundreds of thousands of dollars reselling stuff. Yeah. You know, there's ways to do that reselling. You guys know that, you know, going down the Amazon road and doing different stuff and massive flips. And you can do it, but it's not as easy as people think and certainly not easy to do it the way we do it, selling yeah. this kind of stuff. And I know you guys like to sell the same kind of stuff that I do. Yeah. So I want you to talk, if you're if you're willing to, a little bit about money and, you know, when you started this and, and the struggles and, and where did you find a way to find enough stuff to make ends meet? Don, I know you did a few different things and then you guys had a shop. I want you to talk a little bit about that journey and where it started. I don't know who wants to start on this one. Here, you, here, here's the thing I learned about deciding to be full-time because it's a big, big deal and it's hard. It's kind of like you have no choice. I, I got to the point where I realized I'm not a good worker for other people. <laughs> that's not my strong hey, suit. That's a, you know, that's a good point. You know, people <laughs> you gotta know there, yourself. They just can't, they can't handle it sometimes. And so I think that's a good, and I an hate, honest point. I hated being capped on what I could make. Mm -hmm. Back, you know, when I worked for somebody, you made that much an hour. If you worked harder, you made that much an mm -hmm. hour. Maybe if you were lucky in a year or two, you'd get mm -hmm. a raise and that, you know, doesn't always happen. Right. So I knew I had to do this. It was just in my mm -hmm. soul. It's something I love to do. And when you love to do something, you're willing to struggle for it. Yeah, and honestly, no doubt about it. I remember there was times I had my shop and we were barely making enough to pay the rent. But my dad was working for me for free. I'd bring him one taco from Del Taco because I didn't have much money. So, so you really are the opposite of Gary Vee. Instead yeah. of you working for your dad for free, he was working for you for yeah, free. Yeah, he was. I would actually, never do that by There was a time dad. I paid him. I got to a point where I was able to pay him <laughs> yeah. a little bit. But there was a lot of time, that, mm -hmm. a lot of work that my dad did for free mm -hmm. and my mom did for free. Yeah. Okay. But I just had to do it. That was the thing. When you get to the point where you have to do it, you're willing to struggle. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are willing to go without a lot of stuff, honestly. Mm -hmm. We don't collect much, much stuff. We don't have a lot of like fancy furniture or anything. Right. Um, we are, we love to pay. Minimalists. Pick. Yeah, we're minimalists mm -hmm. because we're around stuff all the time. We yeah. kind of get all the fun out of picking and mm -hmm. all the stuff that we buy naturally probably out of picking. Yeah. So we just don't do it. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And I want to have you answer that question too. But uh, I'm the same way. We, we don't require that much, right? I was, <laughs> I was used to living on nothing. I was exactly. a high school history teacher. My wife didn't have a, a job outside of the home and we made ends meet by, by doing this. And so, you know, at this point, the reselling part of my business makes more than I did as a teacher. Yeah, yeah. And so if you're working fast food, it doesn't take that much yeah. to make that kind of money. But I'm more curious about your decision here and, and how you decided to come up with where you decided to go in that direction and, and how difficult of a transition or maybe it wasn't. Um, the one thing is with my job, I mean, I made really good money, but the hours are horrible. There's a lot of overtime and it's very strenuous on your body. Mm -hmm. And I was at work and the DI would open up at 9 a.m. in the mm -hmm. morning. And I was on a job and 9.15, Carrie texted me and he <laughs> said, I'm going to make more money in this last 15 minutes than you're going to make there all day. Oh. And I said, why is that? What did you said, find? <laughs> I found you. You would appreciate this. Two Mike Trout bobbleheads. Oh. Salt Lake Bees. Yeah. And he sold one okay. for over 200 yep. and the other one had a little issue and he sold that for a little under 200. Oh, and yes. I was like, when he told me that, I'm like, why am I doing this? I'm here. Because <laughs> you can't I mean, find those every day. Exactly. I want it to be noted that it was 9.15 in the morning. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 9.15 in the and morning. And then I knew, he was not, okay, I knew he was going to spend the rest of the day sitting on the couch at the DI, waiting for carts to come out. While I was stuff, there yeah. turning wrenches and getting mm. dirty and all this stuff. And I walked off the job that day oh my and gosh. never went back. I even left my tools on that oh job. Oh, my gosh. I, you could have resold have, those tools. Exactly. I, I was like, you know what? I ain't going to need them. Uh -huh. That's <laughs> and so amazing. We, we let, wow. I You're left such a bad influence. <laughs> I am. I am. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, uh, she, she'd been doing this for years, too. She uh -huh. loves... 
I love it. She loves mm-hmm. finding stuff. She's, you know, big into and, the plushes and yeah. other kinds of things mm-hmm. that I, I don't know. Well, I know a little bit about plushes, but she knows more at this point than I do. About right, let's them, talk so. money. If you're willing to talk money. Okay. Yeah, let's do okay. it. Okay. So doing picking that way, say, let's just go back that first year or two where you guys were doing it together and that was your income. Because at that point, I'm assuming there's no social media income at that point, no. right? No. Okay. Uh, what kind of money were you making? I mean, can you give us a rough rough eft- estimate? How much time were you putting into it and how much money were you making? Yeah, we were at that time I was doing I had my store, my mm-hmm. physical store, and we mm-hmm. did live yeah. auctions. So that was a good source of uh, mm-hmm. traffic and money as mm-hmm. well. Exactly. But there was months where we were doing probably three, four, five K a month. And okay. you know, we live within our means. We didn't have net profit. Net profit, yeah. Okay. So we, we did really, yeah. really well, honestly. And living and pretty frugally and not buying new cars and doing No, that. we're the I'm the never, we're the right. king of, uh, opposite of that. Yeah, we get a two thousand dollar van every, two every two couple years. years and that's it. I've never bought a new car in my life. Ever. And I, I, do I don't think I ever will. I did it when I got away. When I started college, I did it, and it took me 13 years to pay it off, and I paid <laughs> like $8,000 more than it was yeah. worth new, yeah. and it was worth 2000 by the time I paid I've it off. I've actually so. never bought a car, I don't think, on credit either. I pay cash. I mean, I'm very frugal. I'm all about cash purchases of cars. We don't have yeah. credit cards I think you have to don't even use credit cards, yeah. Yeah. honestly. There you go. you got to be that way. If you're going to do reselling for a living this way, yeah, you have to be. You have to be willing to live on a lot less. So that's yeah. really cool. I appreciate that story. i got a few more questions okay. for you. Okay, sure. All right, you guys, since you guys are so big on social media, um, not necessarily YouTube, although your YouTube is growing rather quickly with the shorts you're putting on there and now long form with this picking across America, you guys need to go check it out, especially the episodes with Kamal Picker in it. <laughs> um, those are the best ones. <laughs> and Reagan. It's got Sophie. By the way, Sophie didn't yes. like anybody, y'all. And Sophie loves these we two. Love so that means She's they're good powerful. people. Yeah, she, she likes nobody. <laughs> Except for me. <laughs> well, and the kids. But anyway, I want to talk about social media for just a second. When did that come into play for you? I know it came into play for you because of Carrie, I think, right? He did it first and then you started to yeah. do it. Yeah. And so I want to talk about social media for just a second and then how it plays into reselling and the whole idea of kind of uh, doing this different kind of lifestyle where you're not tied down. So we want to talk about TikTok a little bit. That's where yeah. it started, right? I started on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube at the same time, but TikTok okay. blew up right away. And mm-hmm. I just, there wasn't a lot of people doing any reselling content three years ago on TikTok. Right. I saw a little bit of a niche that I could get into. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm going to make small you know, YouTube videos on TikTok. They started taking off. And I mean taking off. I'm at, uh, I think, 840,000 followers on TikTok now, 100,000 on on Instagram. And then my YouTube is growing mostly because of my short form content. Mm -hmm. And all that really is, is just what you watch on YouTube, the long form, the regular style videos. It's just concise, right to the Mm -hmm. point for the modern short attention span. Mm-hmm. And so honestly, telling me I'm aging out here? You're aging my out. long form videos. <laughs> but you're pretty, you're pretty good with your short form content because you came to me and asked for some advice. <laughs> That's exactly and I helped, right. That's I helped exactly you. right. But it's all, it's, it's, it's fascinating. It's really changed our business completely mm-hmm. to the point where we buy stuff now and we'll sell it on Instagram before we even get it on people eBay. People are videos. like, I want that mug. Mm-hmm. I want that plush. Yep. Right. I want that Michael. Everybody wants the Michael Jordan thing, mm. but we're probably <laughs> not going to do anything with it, keep it ourselves. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's totally revolutionized how we do reselling. It's like American Pickers and they started selling stuff out of their store. Of course, then they started selling merch. I don't know who would ever sell merch. I know, right? <laughs> CommonwealthPicker.com. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Carrie said, or, or Dawn, if you talk about when you started to do it, why you started to do it, and I also want you to talk a little bit about Facebook if that's okay um actually when we started our <coughs> social media when we had our store we actually started a facebook page there oh, it changed our right. store for yeah. getting like people we, into the store right? yeah that and yeah. our we did free delivery mm. and that just took off and yeah, we, we were made making a lot of money thousands of dollars a month off, off, off of that of and then mm. that kind of went to him doing the when tiktok because he he's a big fan of gary v mm-hmm. and so he uh Shout out Gary V. He yeah. gave yeah, you sure. a shout out the other day. <laughs> Gone too. Yeah, I brought my mojo it. mouse in here. I don't know. Well, all right. I'm just going to leave it at that. Go ahead. You keep going. But uh, he he watched that and they said TikTok's the next best thing. And he started doing it and mm-hmm. it just took off. And mm-hmm. he goes, you he goes, you should start doing it too. Start doing like the short form videos and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I started doing it with my furniture. And then when I quit doing the furniture because I realized he was making money doing basically nothing. <laughs> <laughs> because I feel, I mean, doing furniture is very physical. Hard, hard. And it's yeah. a, just find yeah. yourself selling it. And so yeah. I'm like, if he can just go to the DI, make money, mm-hmm. on, and do a video, and mm-hmm. then make more money, I'm going to just do that. So he kind of trained me into 
doing the the mm -hmm. uh, TikTok. Right. He showed me how to do it, and then it just took off. I don't, mm -hmm. I'm not as big as him. I only have a hundred thousand on TikTok mm -hmm. and forty six thousand on Instagram, mm -hmm. and I do have a YouTube, but it's just full of shorts. And I think I got oh, four hundred thirty two. I got four hundred thirty two just off of shorts. Four hundred thirty two yeah. on shorts. That's not bad. <laughs> We're only doing shorts. Subs. Yep. Sub, okay, sub, very sorry. Cool. That's it. Very cool. <laughs> I like it. All right. Is He's it on. Lady Arbitrage? Over it is Lady Arbitrage. Very cool. And you're yeah. on Facebook, is, as am I, Facebook, as yep. are you. Yeah, Facebook is, is another thing oh that's my God, totally yeah. revolutionizing everything. It's a little clunky to use if you're trying mm -hmm. to put social media mm -hmm. on it, but they're pushing it. They're mm -hmm. pushing it big sure. time. Yeah. Mine took off. I Dawn started has doing, a lot of followers. I started doing the Facebook under my own name, mm -hmm. um, not through my furniture business, but I started one for Lady Arbitrage. But... Um, that took that just took off for me. I, yeah. I I posted one video and that just the one my biggest watched video is on that's like twenty five million. Mm -hmm. What was and, it about? Uh, that one I think it was uh, I think it was the mistake I made. I bought a uh -huh. backpack that had somebody's uh -huh. uh, name on it and didn't see it. Yeah. And so, then so some Dave would do. <laughs> See, I need to be a worse reseller. I need to make more mistakes. I can get more people. Followers. People do gravitate towards. In, in all does, reality, they love the authenticity right? Right. of yeah. of seeing resellers not yeah. only succeed but also yeah. show their failures. The yeah. reality yeah. of we people, all do. It's and not you see all... that on YouTube oh, yeah. too. You know, you yeah. see the people. I you know I make a hundred million dollars a year on selling stuff out of a thrift. No, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> right. And and so you know, there's a good mix. I like to. That's what I like to do. And it's just show people the reality, right? Yeah. You're not gonna you're not gonna buy a mansion and retire no. at, at uh, you know well in my case 45 but uh, thank you guys very much anything you want to add before we get out of here real quick yeah you know sub to trash to cash podcast there you guys. Oh, there you go. one yeah, reselling yeah. podcast in the world That's maybe right. probably not <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you all very much good thank luck you. with the rest of your trip and uh we appreciate you stopping by thank, thank you. you we appreciate you